In this brain by bit, I will show images of Alzheimer's disease, one of the most prevalent and dreaded forms of dementia. It might seem strange that I start with an air view of the city of Venice, but there is an analogy, because in the city of Venice there are many small canals, waterways, that are crucial for the city. And in neurons, there is a microtubular network, so small canals inside the cell that regulate the transport of nutrients and that are vital for the survival of the neurons. In Alzheimer's disease, there is volume loss of the entorhinal cortex and hippocampus, typically, without any change in signal intensity in contrast to hippocampal sclerosis or limbic encephalitis. In neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's, the neurons die quietly and slowly without causing any change in signal intensity. And the most important role of MRI in Alzheimer's disease is to exclude other causes of dementia and to assess the regional volume loss. And it might be very difficult because you have to correlate to what is normal for the age of the patients and if available you can compare to older images. These are T1 weighted images of uh, patients with clinical symptoms of Alzheimer's disease who have progressive volume loss and worsening of the symptoms after one year and at the MRI follow-up after two years with progressive volume loss of the entorhinal cortex and hippocampus. The exact pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease is not known, but there are two things that play a key role, and that's the formation of amyloid plaques in the extracellular space of the cortex, impairing the communication between the neurons, and a problem with the microtubules intracellular, with the tau protein leading to the formation of tau tangles. And the microtubules in the neurons have already been drawn over 100 years ago by one of my favorite doctors, Ramon de Quijal. And you can see the microtubules directed towards the synapse, taking care of the transport. And with the advances in techniques, you can also visualize the microtubules now on very advanced microscopy. And if there is a problem with the tau or with the amyloid, as you can see in these mouse models, or in another protein called apolipoprotein E4, because of the tau tangles, there's axonal disruption and swelling, impaired transport, and there's this dying back of the cell body because it cannot function anymore if it cannot communicate with the other cells anymore. And that's how the cells die slowly and quietly in Alzheimer's disease. You can grade the amount of atrophy with a visual rating scale that is often used. It's called MTA, mesial temporal lobe atrophy, graded from uh, 0 to 4 and taken into account the width of the temporal horn, the width of the choroid fissure and the height of the hippocampus. And there is a special form of Alzheimer's disease occurring at a younger age with a familiar component and um, in that case there's not atrophy of the hippocampus but of the precuneus and uh, this is a normal control and this is a patient with early onset Alzheimer's disease and the precuneus is located um, just above the parietal occipital sulcus which forms the letter Y on its side with the calcarine and just behind the marginal ramus here of the cingulate sulcus. 
And this precuneus is not only involved in visual spatial processing, but also in episodic memories, so memories about your own, own life. And it has a lot of connections with the frontal lobe, and the precuneus also has connections with the superior temporal gyrus, as you can see on this macroscopic specimens, and with the parahippocampal gyrus, both on the macroscopic specimens and uh, tractography. So there are different types of Alzheimer's disease, typically with involvement of the hippocampus and mesial temporal lobe, and also some atrophy of the parietal, region. There's a limbic predominant form where the atrophy is most pronounced in the hippocampal area and then there's the hippocampal sparing form that occurs more often in the early onset familial form. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will discuss another tau pathology from 